Now that you have seen Blender's interface and basic tools, it's time to do something a bit more practical. The remainder of the series will be spent creating this scene. It's a simple bathroom interior scene with a number of objects I created with learning in mind. Unlike what would be the usual process of blocking out a scene and setting up a camera and lighting first, we'll start modeling the various objects. In this way, we'll start with the simplest shapes and concepts while steadily advancing in complexity. Here's the outline of the series. We'll start with the small props, like this simple oil diffuser, then the larger set pieces, including the vanity and window, and we'll wrap up our modeling phase by creating our room. Once everything is created, we can move on to lighting, then materials, and the final render. So settle in, open Blender, and get ready to create your first scene. When you open up Blender, you'll see the default scene with our cube and camera and light. We're not going to need the camera and light immediately so we're just going to delete them and we're not animating anything so we're going to pull this corner down of the viewport and close that timeline. You'll see that I have my screencast keys on so that anytime I click or hit keys you'll see in the uh, left hand corner what it is I'm doing. So now we have our default cube. By default, it is 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. Blender's default system of measurement is metric. Uh, so we're going to tab into this, and everything is selected by default. So we're going to hit G for move or grab or translate, whichever you prefer, and hit Z to lock it to the Z axis like this and we're going to say one. We're going to move it one meter. Since it's a two meter cube, that will put the, that'll move it halfway along its height. Now you'll see that the origin of the cube is sitting right on the floor plane. So, it is important to keep a real world scale when you make any kind of assets because you'll be importing them into other scenes and you don't want to have to guess at how big they are in the next scene. So what we're going to do is on the right hand pane here you'll see dimensions. We're going to make this very small. It's going to be 0 0.08 and we'll make it the same for all dimensions. There we go. 0 0.08. So we have a very small cube. This is going to end up being our jar that sits on the back of the toilet in our scene and has those little sticks sticking out that's supposed to uh, emanate the perfume of the oil that's in it. Now you'll see in scale that this has been scaled down quite a bit uh, because we changed the dimensions. We do not want things to be a different scale than one to one because modifiers when we get to that will not operate correctly on them. You'll get funny results that you're not expecting. So the way to apply this scale is to hit Control A and we'll say scale. Now you'll see that the scale is 1. So the dimensions are as we set them, the scale is 1. We shouldn't get any funny results from our uh, modifiers when we add them. That'll be down here on this little wrench icon. But first Let's tab into edit mode and let's go hit one on your number pad and that will give you a straight on front view. Uh, what we'll do is it's going to be kind of a square jar or a square bottle as you saw in the, uh, the renders uh, previously. So let's hit three to go into face selection mode. Click the top and we'll hit E to extrude. I'm going to go back to front view just so we can see how high we're going with this. E to extrude and this will end up being the neck of our bottle or, or leading into the neck of it. Um, now you'll see that it's added some geometry. The top of our cube is still right there. Uh, let's scale that in by hitting S. 
what's that look like from a left or a front view looks pretty good let's bring it down a little uh, now we can hit G and of course that lets us just freely uh, move it we can hit Z so that it stays on the Z axis that looks good and we're going to delete this face so with the face selected hit X or delete and you'll get the delete menu uh, you can hit the F key or select faces and that will delete the faces that you have selected we're gonna have some rounded corners on our bottle so we want to bevel these edges if we hold alt and select an edge it gets every edge that is in line with it so if I hit alt here or alt here it's selecting an edge loop an edge loop is a collection of edges that are joined end to end so we'll hit alt click on there hold shift to exp to um, add to your selection so shift alt we'll do the same there and there and there now this will also be rounded now if you hit alt and click here it's not going to do anything because these are corners so now we have all these edges selected not this not this row though what we're going to do is hit control B and that'll bring us into bevel mode you'll see that this uh, bevels out that's technically called a chamfer if it's just one face like that I'm gonna hit control Z and bring us back hit control B again and this time I'm going to uh, scroll the wheel on the mouse up and that will increase the amount of edges that we're putting in our bevel I'm going to put it up to just two and click to finalize and so that's what we're left with now we could have selected this top edge with it but we're going to do it in a separate operation so hit control B again after alt clicking the loop the edge loop and we're going to bevel it a slightly different amount than the rest of it I mean, really that's just preference it's up to you now we want the top or the neck of the bottle to be a circle that's not a circle uh, if we look at it hit 7 on the number pad look straight down at it it's basically a rounded square if we alt select that loop again uh, there is an add-on that we can activate that gives us the ability to just make that a circle uh, so you can click on edit preferences add-ons and up here type loop it's called loop tools and you'll see that I've already put the checkbox there but just click it and that'll activate it um, you can go to documentation report a bug all that kind of stuff but now we have it activated we can close that and we can right click to bring up our con context menu and loop tools is at the top of that just select circle and there it is now that twisted it a little bit I'm not sure why that happens sometimes with loop tools but what we can do is hit R for rotate uh, if you're not in top-down view you'll want to hit Z after R so that you're constrained to the Z axis but if we're looking straight down it's we're only seeing the Z axis anyway so we'll do that it doesn't have to be exact I'm going to go back to one front view E to extrude this edge loop now it won't go straight up because there's not a face that it's uh, extruding so we have to hit Z again and right about there now we're not going to do the lip around the top just yet we are going to add our first modifier so if you haven't already select the branch here that I just mentioned a few minutes ago hit add modifier with the uh, jar selected and 
adds the uh, solidify modifier. And what that does is it solidifies our mesh. If we hit Z and 4 on the numpad, or click this icon up here in the top, you'll go into wireframe mode. And you can see that it, it adds quite a bit of thickness to the jar, because we're, we're kind of seeing through it there. We don't want it to be that thick. This is going to be a glass jar. So over here on thickness, we can bring that down. Uh, Z and 6 on the numpad will bring us back to solid view. And if we're looking at the top here, this will give us a good idea of how thick we're making the jar. It is kind of thick glass, so I'm going to leave it at 0 0.004. I'm going to click even thickness so that it's the same thickness all the way throughout the mesh. Um, I've never run into a situation where I don't want that checked. I'm not sure why that's an option, but it is. Now, if we go into edit mode, you'll see that our mesh has not actually been modified. It's, there's, no, there's nothing we can select on this inner, inner side. It doesn't actually exist in the mesh. We can turn this on and off, and it's, it's, uh, this is what you call a non-destructive workflow. So it, it's not destroying your mesh. You can, if you have multiple modifiers, you can move them around. You can take some out, put some in, and your original mesh still stays the same. So if we're in object mode again, we can apply by hitting this down arrow and hitting apply. Now it has modified our mesh and it has become part of our object. Um, now let's go into face select mode by hitting three. Alt, click, so you get a face loop and we'll hit delete or X and we're going going to delete faces. Once you get accustomed to the shortcut keys, this all gets much, much faster. I'm going to hit 2 for edge select. I'm going to go back to 1. And I'm going to extrude this along the Z up to about where the top of the lip will be. Control R will give us a new edge loop. You can hit uh, you can scroll to change the number of edges just like you can with bevel. We're going to keep it at one. And now once you click, you have the option to slide it. It goes into edge slide mode. Um, you can hit escape and it'll be dead center. And I'm going to scale this out. Now obviously that's not what the lip of the, the bottle is supposed to look like, but we're going to bevel that edge. So let's go into either 3 or 1 on the numpad. 1 is front view, 3 is left. And you'll see that when we bevel, it's kind of going past the edges. Uh, what we want is for these edges to just meet the edge and stop. So C in most tools is constrain. If you hit C, it will constrain our bevel to not go past those edges. Now I'm going to control Z because I wanted more edges in there. Control B and three edges looks like enough. Now this does create a problem if you're not aware of what you just did. Uh, if you select one of these vertices, move it around with G, you'll see that there there are vertices sitting on top of each other and that's that will cause problems so control Z and we can select all of our vertices and hit F3 or spacebar if you if you've set up search to be your spacebar and type merge and one of your option one of your options is going to be merge by distance just show you here. You, you can search for any command here. And merge by distance is what we want. And you'll see down here it says removed 30, 32 vertices. So there were 16 here, 16 here, around, around this loop. So now if we move this, it's connected everywhere it should be.
I hit escape to cancel that. Uh, select your upper edge loop with alt click. You'll notice you're, we do a lot of alt clicking. That is uh, one, <laughs> you, you select most things with alt because you always want a, an edge loop or a face loop rather than just one or two usually. I'm going to hit 7 to go to top and I'm going to E to extrude that and uh, hit escape. Now you'll see we have the same same thing going on. These are sitting on top of their original uh, vertices. Hit scale without deselecting anything and bring it into where it's just m matching up with those faces below it or those vertices below it doesn't have to be exact. Nothing has to be exact, well, usually. Um, with that still selected, you can be in edge or vertice, vertex selection mode, by the way. I'm in vertex at the moment, which is one across the top of your keyboard. So I've selected these two edge loops. Um, Control F uh, is the face tool menu. Uh, we want to bridge this, which is going to be L. So that's an interesting problem. There we go. Uh, I hit Control Z and redid it. I don't know why it gave us those triangles, but it will put faces between the two edges that we selected, and that's called bridging. Now, this is, if we zoom out a bit, this is starting starting to look like a pretty good model, I think. We're going to bevel this, and I'm going to take that down to just to one edge, rather. Now, we are just getting the basic shape. You may be wondering why doesn't it look smooth? Why doesn't it why doesn't it look like a a jar or a bottle? The way to fix this, or it's not actually fixing, this is the way you would work in 3D. You start with your basic shape. Um, but one of the magic modifiers that we have at our disposal is the subdivision surface modifier. This divides every face one way in both directions. So you'll see it hasn't modified the actual mesh, but there's a cut across here, a cut across there, and it's made an average curve between each. Uh, if we tab out, we can see that it's kind of smoothed out some of the detail that we want to keep. Uh, so let's go back here back to one of our views, go tab and control R here, somewhere in here. And we're going to slide that up toward the lip. The closer edges are together, the harder your crease is going to be with your subdivision surface modifier. So let's add one above and below that edge that are fairly close. And you don't want it too tight because glass doesn't really have sharp seams in it when it's when it's a molded bottle or anything like that. Now, it's still this faceted look, right? You've got these uh, faces all over the place. Right click and hit Shade Smooth. Uh, that will average out the what's called the normal. The normal is really, on any face, is the side that is facing outward. However, um, if we right click and go back to flat, it's showing the exact normal for each face. If we go to Shade Smooth, it hasn't changed the, the mesh at all, but it's averaged out the normals between each of the faces, so it looks smooth. Um, back on the subdivision surface, let's add another layer of divisions. And that's looking pretty smooth. It looks pretty good. So let's go to another dead-on view. And let's go to wireframe mode. I'm hitting Z and 4. You can also hit Z and click on any of these, any of the uh, display modes. 
or you can click along up here. So here we are in wireframe mode. We're going to hit Shift A to add a new object. And this object's going to be a circle under mesh. And you'll see it's a, it's a two meter circle. Everything's two meters by default. I think everything is. It's too big and it has too much geometry in it for what we want it for. Uh, what this will be for is for the little bamboo sticks that stick out of the bottle. So if we click on this, all right, so my screencast keys are in the way here. F9 will also bring it up wherever your cursor is. Let's take this down to six vertices because it's going to be very small and we're going to put a subdivision surface modifier on it. So the lack of complexity isn't going to matter. And let's make it a point 0.1. It still has to be smaller, but we'll leave it there. Now, changing things in that F9 menu does not change the actual scale of the object. Once you commit, that's what it is. It's, it's a one-for-one one scale when you, when you create it. So we're going to scale it down to the size of one of these sticks. And now you'll see our scale is all wrong. It's not wrong, but it's not, it's not going to help us the way it is. So we'll control A, apply the scale. So now it's the one to one. Tab into edit mode. And you can see that, you know, we can select the various types of um, components. There are no faces by default. So I'm going to go into edge mode, select it all. You can hit A to select all or alt click. And so that I can see how long I'm making this, I'm going to E, hold Z to keep it on the Z axis. That's probably long enough. And with this selected still, let's hit control F to bring up that face uh, menu again and we're gonna hit G or click grid fill. And that will fill the, the empty space that was selected with uh, quads. It's important to keep all quads in most cases, not triangles or n-gons, which are uh, more than five vertices, which if, if something's uh, going to be still and not animated or not deformed in any way, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but if you're if you're making a model available to someone else, you want it to be all quads because you don't know what their purpose is for it. So let's hit Control R here, because we want a very tight, very tight uh, subdivision up here. If we hit G twice, when a edge loop is selected, it will move along the edges. It's called edge slide. And let's select these. In wireframe mode, every face gets a dot on it so that you can select it. And we're going to hit I for inset. That's a new one that we haven't covered yet. And that um, is pretty simple. It, it insets. Uh, and any, any one of these tools, you can always type how much you want it to affect the model. I'm just moving the mouse and clicking to, to finalize. I'm not trying to do anything exact here. So here we are. Let's go to solid mode. And now we want to work on the other end of this stick, but we can't because the jar is in the way. Uh, let's hit slash on the number pad, and that will be local view. So the only thing you'll see is the object you had selected when you when you click that, or when you when you tap that key. So we're going to do the same thing down here. Slide an edge very close. Alt, alt select this ring, control F, G for grid fill, and I for inset. Uh, you'll want to learn the shortcut keys. That's really how you're going to be fast at this. You can't just, you can't be clicking around all these menus because it it just slows you down. So I'm going to hit escape 
to put my uh, cut. Uh, it's not cut. It's um, loop cut. Control R, and then I scrolled up for the number of edges I wanted. So now, if we we want to we want to put a subdivision surface modifier on it, well, you use a subdivision surface modifier so often that there is a shortcut key for it. You can hit Control One to give it one level of subdivision or control 2 to, to add a modifier with two levels. I'm going to hit control 2 and you'll see over here it added this, the subdivision surface modifier and it's already set at 2. Uh, the difference between level levels in viewport and render are you can show fewer levels of subdivision in your viewport so that you're not slowing things down when you have a larger scene but when you render it'll still have all those levels of subdivision. Let's right click shade smooth and I mean that's pretty simple it's just a bamboo stick. Hit um, numpad slash and I think yeah let's go back into to edit mode with tab select everything and scale shift Z. This will exclude the Z axis. So we'll scale it down a little bit just along its width. That looks a little better. Go into a side view, wireframe mode, and let's move this so that it's, the origin is somewhere around the corner of the inside of the jar. And we will hit R for rotate. If you go back to solid mode, come up here, we want to rotate it on Y by hitting Y after R and have it just rest on the edge of the bottle. Like that. Now if we hit 7 on the numpad, looking straight down, you can see that our cursor is still sitting at the world origin, 0, 0, 0. Click up here. This is our this is the point that any of your transforms will reference. Um, by default, it is the median point, or the it's also the origin in uh, object mode. Let's go to 3D cursor. So now if we were to rotate this, it won't rotate around its origin, it'll rotate around the cursor. Um, Shift D will duplicate. That's like Control C, Control V in most programs, uh, and and then you have an exact copy of of the object you just had selected. Delete that because there's another there's another mode of duplicating that we want to use. It uses less memory. It's called instancing. Alt D and hit Escape. So it's sitting in the same exact position as the last one. Hit R and these kind of sit different directions. Hit Alt D again, R, Alt D, R. Do that a few times till you have enough sticking out of the jar. Um, an instance is different from duplicate in that if we select one of these and go into edit mode, and let's say we select those faces and we move them around it's doing the same thing in each one of those. I'll hit escape. Now, these seem to be intersecting the jar a little bit. Well, uh, G, X, G, Y, G, Y, I, this isn't going to be close enough to the camera in our final scene, as you saw, to really notice things like that, but it's it's good practice. Uh, here's another thing that would not happen in real life, obviously, but it's not going to be visible to the camera, so we're not going to worry about that. So that is all for modeling the oil jar. 
Uh, so you've just completed your first 3D object and that's it. We're going to move on to the next video here where we'll dive into the next small prop uh, which will be a little more complex. Uh, the idea with each of these videos is that each one will recap what we just did in the previous one and get a little more complex in the second in the next one. So I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you found this video useful, hit like and consider subscribing to the channel. And you can turn on that notification bell too so that you don't miss future videos. Until next time, I'm Carl with Blender Forge.